So almost everyone needs to manage and share data. However, unless there's already a company producing applications for their data, then they have to become programmers to create such applications. Data like this belongs to a wide class of applications which can be described as CRUD plus lightweight computation. CRUD is an acronym that means create, read, update, and delete. And it spans many applications. And while in the past two decades there's, there have been so many efforts to bring HTML and CSS authoring to the masses, think of all the WYSIWYG authoring environments, once someone needs to go a little bit beyond that, for example, to do persistence, they are bombarded with this slow of terms and concepts. And they, instead of going on to create stuff, they want to crawl into the fetal position and weep. So, uh, and there are more tools coming out every day. But instead of lowering the barrier to web programming, they make things even harder. They make the, the, the landscape dizzying, even for professional programmers. It's indicative that even with the most cutting-edge frameworks, implementing a simple to-do list application requires hundreds of lines of JavaScript. And that, those counts do not even include HTML, CSS, or even JavaScript comments. It's just pure lines of JavaScript code, just for a to-do list. So the research question we, we are trying to explore is can non-programmers non create data interactions? And for this, we created Mavo. Mavo is an HTML language extension, not a system. This makes it portable. It doesn't depend on any particular web infrastructure, and it means that authors can use whatever HTML and CSS authoring tools they want, from text editors to WYSIWYG environments. It supports hierarchical data, which prior research has shown occurs in 53% of, uh, of structured data schemas. And it also supports lightweight computation, because most applications are not pure CRUD. There has been prior work in this area, but none, none of the existing work satisfies all three criteria simultaneously. So before we dive into the syntax of Mavo, let me show you an example to whet your appetite a bit. So this is a simple to-do list. You can add items, delete items, mark items as checked. Um, it shows you how many are done out of how many total. And if I asked you how many lines of JavaScript do you think it takes to create a simple to-do list like that, you might say 100, maybe a few hundred. Remember the to-do MVC uh, counts? So with Mavo, the answer is zero. All it takes is this simple HTML. And actually, most of it would be present even in a static mockup of a to-do list that is not functional. The only, the only bits that are needed to make this fun a functional application are the highlighted ones. Intrigued? Let's, let's dive into the syntax. So the first attribute, uh, the first Mavo attribute is data store, which both declares a Mavo app and also tells Mavo where to persist data. For example, if its value is the local keyword, data is persisted locally in the browser, in the, in the browser's local storage. But it can also be a URL to one of our supported web services. We currently support GitHub and Dropbox, but it's very extensible. And in that case, Mavo takes care of authentication, and then, uh, and then data is persisted in that web service using its API. So you might be wondering at this point, OK, so what exactly is persisted? So there is the property attribute for this that specifies what is actually the data, what should be persisted. If the property attribute is, is set on HTML, uh, on form elements, such as these, Mavo just takes care of persisting, uh, of persisting the, the values of the form elements, as you can see here. Every time I change one of them, the values are persisted. However, if the property attribute is used on any other HTML element, then, th then it becomes editable. The first thing we notice is an edit button that has been added here. And then depending on the type of the element, Mavo provides a different editing widget. So in this case, the, um, an image element uh, enables us to change its URL or upload a new image. A date, if it's, if, uh, if it's using the proper time element, that you should use in HTML to describe dates, then it's edited through a date picker. A meter element is edited via slider and so on. Other elements are edited via their contents, which is the default. But most CRUD applications also include collections. Remember, the D in CRUD starts, stands for delete, so you need to add items, delete items, 
So Mavo does this with the data multiple property uh, uh, attribute. Once the data multiple attribute is added on an element with a property attribute, then that element becomes a template and Mavo adds UI to add elements or delete elements, as you can see here. And this can be as simple as a list of strings, like, here, like in this example, or it can be entire structures, like this list of cats here, just because I like silly demos and cats. So you can see this collection actually has its own list of hobbies inside it. It's a collection of collections, which is something you cannot really do with a spreadsheet. And if you think about it, such nested, such nested schemas in a relational database, they require multiple tables and foreign keys. But here, authors can just design their HTML layout as they would in a static web page. And by just annotating it, they're describing their schema without any data modeling experience. And their identifiers in, uh, the, the identifiers they're providing via the property attributes are also used in the UI. You can see it's used in the placeholder here. Uh, it's used in these buttons, in the tooltips, uh, which encourages people to produce proper identifiers as well. I also mentioned lightweight computation. Mavo supports expressions that are completely declarative, just like spreadsheet expressions, except uh, instead of referring to obscure uh, tables, um, in, uh, obscure row and cell references, they can refer to properties by name. And these expressions can be used anywhere, including in attributes. You can see that as I move this slider, the title is updating as, we uh, as well. As a side note, my slides are HTML, so this is actually Mavo running into it, so this doubles as a live demo. We can also give names to existing expressions and use them in other expressions, essentially creating declarative variables. You can see just by using a few expressions, I've basically created a simple color picker here. But expressions are also extremely powerful when combined with data multiple elements. Uh, if, if an expression outside a collection, outside a data multiple element, refers to a property on or inside the data multiple element, then it resolves to all its values. For example, here I've referred to the age property, which is inside the collection. So this expression resolves to all the ages inside the collection. This is not very useful on its own, but it means I can do aggregates, such as the average age, counting how many cats I have, how many ages they have. And even be, uh, because Mavo supports operators on multi-valued properties, I can do counts, uh, I can do aggregates on, uh, with filters, like, like in this expression, where I'm counting how many cats are older than six. And this is completely reactive. If I add another cut, you can see it updates as I'm editing the data. So with these few simple primitives, I can create a very wide, arrange, uh, a very wide range of applications. Uh, this is actually the first Mavo application we ever created, and this is what inspired me to create Mavo originally. Uh, I give a lot of tech talks uh, at conferences, and I, was, I, 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 was man I had this list of talks that I was managing on my website, and I, I started managing it as just HTML, you know, copying and pasting every talk. Most of you have done this at some point. Uh, for example, for your publications. And eventually this became tiresome after like 10 or 20 talks. So I wrote my own script to manage them and I still had to edit a JSON file. And it was, it was a few hundred lines of JavaScript. And I was thinking if I, this is such a common need, managing a collection of, of data. This is such a common need. What would I have done if I wasn't a programmer? This is a, a slightly more advanced color picker, but it's basically the same idea. This is a parameterized Mavo logo, which shows that Mavo can also be used on SVG elements, not just HTML. This is a mortgage calculator, an invoicing system, and we'll see a few more demos later on. So we run a user study to test both Mavo's usability and learnability, but also can it be used on real HTML that people write. So the general study design included a tutorial in the beginning, then a structured part with specific tasks, to test Mavo's usability and learnability, and, last, and lastly, a freestyle study to test if Mavo is sufficient for real-world use cases. We recruited 20 participants from local meetup groups, 
and social media. 13 of them were female, 6 male, and 1 non-binary. Their mean age was 35.9. And 13 were uh, beginner or worse programmers, and 7 were intermediate. Before the study, we asked them to create a contact manager mock-up. 7 did. So the freestyle part uh, of the study had only 7 participants. For the structured study, we had, three, uh, we had two applications, a foodie log, which is a restaurant visit tracker, and a pros and cons application, uh, each of them with 10 uh, to, to 12 task, tasks of increasing difficulty, uh, starting from basic CRUD tasks, such as making things editable, uh, turning things into collections, uh, and then basic expressions, and all the way to complex expressions to really test Mavo's limits and see where people actually stumble. So before, uh, before explaining Mavo to them, we showed them a finished demo of the app they had to create. This is the decision-making app, and this is the foodie log. And we asked them, if you were given the HTML and CSS, how long do you think it would take you to create something like this? A few brave souls said hours, but most said days, weeks, even months. In reality, it took them about half an hour with Mavo. So for the CRUD, with, in, uh, with the CRUD tasks, we had 100% success. All participants were able to carry out the CRUD tasks, making things editable, turning them into collections. Most participants were able to carry out the basic expressions tasks. Uh, and during, during these tasks, we noticed something interesting. If the expression they had to write was surrounded by white space, the success rate was 100%. If it was surrounded by other characters, the success rate could drop to 75%, which indicates that people seem to have a hard time grasping concatenation. With more complex expressions, the success rate was about 3 out of 4. And we noticed that people struggled a lot with conditionals. We had an if function that is very similar to Excel's if function, a condition, what to output if it's true, what to output if it's not. People seem to struggle a lot with that, especially when it was nested. And some participants even remarked that this, is, this reminded them what they found hard about programming. We also noticed a two-point drop uh, in perceived difficulty on a five-point Likert, Likert scale compared to the rating before MAVO and before the study, when we showed them the app initially. So this is the summary of the results of the structured study. For the freestyle study, people were asked to bring their own contact manager mock-up. These are ex uh, four examples uh, of contact managers after MAVO has been applied to them. And for this part of the study, every participant were able, was able to convert their own HTML to a fully-fledged web application using MAVO. Some participants even went home and created their own applications. You can see here three of them a collectible card game, a horse feed tracker, apparently horse feeding is very complex, and the bug tracker application. Many participants remarked on Mavo's simplicity, and also they found it very easy to learn. But most importantly, we heard comments over and over again about how Mavo does the things that people actually wanted to do and found incredibly hard, especially those that struggled with programming. So, Mavo, of course, is just the beginning. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, one of the things we want to investigate, especially after we deploy Mavo to the wild and open source it hopefully next month, uh, is handling schema mutations better. So, currently, Mavo infers the schema from the HTML, which is convenient when you don't have any data. But once you actually use Mavo to save some data, what happens, after you, what happens if you change your HTML template afterwards? This creates a mismatch between the schema of the saved data and the HTML. How do we handle this to create minimum data loss, ideally no data loss? Of course, filtering and sorting is a pretty obvious direction. And also granular access control. Currently, someone can either edit all the data or none of it. But in many real-world applications, especially multi-user applications, which Mavo doesn't currently really target, uh, you want more granular control. For example, one user publishing a collection of blog posts and then people being able to append to the comments but not edit other people's comments or the blog posts themselves. So that's about it.
Thank you very much. Domo arigato. Do you have any questions? Questions? Right, I guess I'll ask. So great work, it's really interesting. Um, I was wondering, like, who do you see as the target user here? Because you said there were some beginners, but it seems like you do still need to know some HTML or something about web development in order to actually use this. Yes, in this case, novices uh, uh, refers to programming novices. So uh, we're currently targeting people who already know HTML and CSS, but since Mavo is a language, it can be very easily implemented on top of an existing WYSIWYG editor. Like you can imagine an add property button, uh, a make collection button. Uh, like it's, it's, it's very easy to add these things uh, on top of an existing WYSIWYG editor. And there are many WYSIWYG editors that add, uh, allow you to add any attribute to any element. So. If, if, if a sufficiently flexible WYSIWYG editor can even be used today. So yeah, our primary target group is people who already create static websites uh, one way or another, whether that's by authoring HTML and CSS by hand or by using a WYSIWYG editor, but struggle with JavaScript and, and programming. But secondarily, as a, as a kind of secondary target group, we're also interested in developers because authoring CRUD applications is extremely common. And even though deve us developers know how to do it, it's still much quicker to use Mavo than to handwrite the, the code for it ev every time for every specific purpose. So could you customize this and create like your own little widgets? Yes, Mavo is designed to be very, very extensible in almost every part of it. Uh, the editing widgets can be customized. Uh, there's an API to add more uh, storage backends. And it's also designed to be able, uh, like it has hooks in the code so you can add plugins that customize pretty much everything about it. In fact, the expressions are actually implemented as a plugin. You can remove the expressions and it still functions, uh, like you can still use it to create CRUD applications and not have any of the expressions code. It's basically a plugin. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for Leah? There's one. Thanks for the talk. Um, can you explain the deployment process? Once you build it, how do you make it live? So Mavo is currently implemented, Mavo's interpreter is currently implemented as a JavaScript library, so you just include Mavo's JavaScript and CSS in your page, and that's it. You don't need a, back -end, a server that runs backend code. You can even run it on, on a service that just allows you to host static pages. Uh, like anything that runs static pages, anything that runs HTML and CSS can run Mavo. Great. So let's thank Leah. And this brings us to the end of the session. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.